Hello and welcome to the ADM Investor Services Weekly Market Kickoff. Our speakers today are Steve Freed, VP of Grain Research, and Alan Bush, our Financial Futures Economist here at ADM IS. As a reminder, ADM Investor Services presents this weekly video for the discussion of the markets. Please keep in mind that the views and opinions expressed are those of the individual speakers and not those of ADM Investor Services or the Archer Daniel Vision Company. And now my first question is for Steve. Steve, what is going on with the grain markets? You know, I think we have kind of a perfect storm in the grain markets. We started out in 2020 with uh, some lower crops and then China came in and bought um, a record amount of U.S. soybeans and corn, and they continue to be a, a net buyer. And then we hit uh, a Brazil drought. And today, you, uh, corn prices in the May are approaching 680, and that's because it looks like the Brazilian corn crop is going to be as much as 19 million tons below the USDA's guess, and that, that could reduce their exports by 12 million tons. So in that um, August through January time frame, uh, buyers are going to have to either buy Ukraine or U.S. corn. And Brazil might have to import corn between now and July. So all of this is adding a premium into the marketplace. Also, cash basis levels are sharply higher for corn because ethanol is now profitable. And also, we're seeing some uh, big uh, feed numbers in the livestock area. Uh, the wheat market is following uh, at eight-year highs, uh, now over $7. And I think it's two things. Uh, I think wheat has to keep up with uh, corn as far as uh, feeding is concerned. A record amount of feeding is already forecast by the USDA worldwide. We just really don't have the supply for wheat to be cheaper and feed more. Plus, we look for summer dry weather conditions across southern Canada and the Dakotas, which could lower the spring wheat crop numbers. And then finally, our weather guy believes that starting in as, as early as late May, we're going to start seeing some dry weather across the parts of the western Corn Belt. That includes the Dakotas, Nebraska, Iowa, and maybe even Minnesota. And so we've had, uh, like Hightower, we asked him, well, what do you think is the next price objective of May at 1550? He's saying 1616 and then $17 on the beans. Um, we're looking at 678 on nearby corn. He said the next objective is 710, then 754, and then maybe even $8, which would mean that wheat would have to be those same prices. So it's up to the weatherman. Uh, we've got a May deliveries, which would probably be very, very light. The USDA May supply and demand report would be the first S&D for 21 and 22. And after that, we trade weather. And the fear is that the weather is not going to be perfect. And we need perfect weather this year or the 21 and 22 corn and soybean carryouts drop even further. And Steve, uh, do you see this rally that we're having this morning continuing? Yes, I do. I think it's going to be extremely volatile because what we're trading is basically a drought west of the Mississippi. So if any rain moves across, that's kind of unexpected. Or the fact that I thought these prices would we would be trading in June instead of the first of May. So it's going to be extremely volatile. But uh, the funds have do not have a record position yet on corn, beans, meal, or soybean oil, and so uh, they could come in and buy. And I think Alan will have a important part of all this because is money going to move out of the equity markets into commodities? Is inflation going to be something that People come back and buy commodities. We're already seeing copper prices make new highs on um, an increase potentially in global demand here in the United States, uh, post-increase in raw materials that once people get vaccinated. So all these things contribute to um, the higher trend and the path of least resistance, I think, is up in the grains. Thanks, Steve. Uh, my next set of questions are for Alan. Alan, yes. What will the F, uh, FOMC say at the conclusion of its two-day policy meeting on Wednesday? Well, first of all, I think Steve is uh, absolutely right that inflation will be driving a lot of these uh, markets, uh, industrial commodities uh, as well. 
So that is a trend that is uh, very much in place and is likely to be something that lasts for quite some time. But as far as the uh, FOMC meeting, of course, they will hold their uh, meeting uh, today and tomorrow with, with the statement tomorrow. The Fed most likely will hold interest rates unchanged at the current levels, uh, zero to 25 basis points, and bond purchases will remain steady at the conclusion of that meeting. At least that's the consensus view and also my view on what the Fed may do. Also, we had Fed Chair Powell saying that he anticipates output in job growth will accelerate in the months ahead, but he also reiterated that the Fed plans to wait until the economy's recovery is complete before it will raise interest rates. Uh, so this is one area where I diverge from uh, the consensus view. Uh, many analysts are now thinking that the Fed will be raising rates before the Fed's pledge uh, not to raise before 2023. I'm in, in keeping with the belief that the Fed will keep rates on hold and will not raise rates early, but that is a minority view. But for right now, the Fed will probably keep their policies as they are. Okay. Um, what is sustaining the advance in gold and silver prices since they bottomed in late March? Okay. Well, first of all, the technicals have been uh, improving as of uh, the end of last month and some downtrend lines have been taken out to the uh, upside. So I think that the fundamental that is dominating is the possibility that most central banks are likely to keep their accommodation for longer in spite of the inflationary fears. So that is a long-term bullish fundamental for the precious metals. And I think that we will probably see, see higher prices uh, for both gold and silver. All right, Alan, uh, let's moving over to the stock indexes. What is the dominant fundamental and outlook for stock index futures in your opinion? Okay, so right now traders are looking at earnings and earnings have been very uh, impressive as of late uh, with 123 companies in the S&P 500 having released uh, results so far. Over 85% of them have reported earnings that were above analyst estimates. Also, some analysts now predicting that there is going to be a 34% increase in profit growth. Uh, but I would think that the dominant influence is still the low interest rate environment, and that is something that will be with us for quite some time. So the long-term outlook for stock index futures remains positive in my view, and I would not be surprised to see another new round of record highs for stock index futures. Great, Steve, anything else to add about the markets? Well, I think it's pretty important that farmers kind of look at this market. Uh, you know, they're busy planting right now, but they should be scale up sellers in November beans as we get closer to $14 and corn as we get closer to $6. Um, you know, we're, we're betting a lot on higher prices because of inclement weather. So they should think about these prices are good prices if we have normal crops and we could take prices a lot lower in the fall if we do have normal weather. So I think the farmers should be scale up sellers uh, in new crop. They pretty much sold out all their old crop, and that's one of the reasons why we have some inverses in the marketplace as uh, crushers reach for uh, inventories before the end of the year. But um, again, I think farmers should be scale up sellers on further rallies. Right. Well, I thank both of you for your time, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Th thank you.